Acts number 12, Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. Again, we appreciate the Lord. I, I studied all week and tried to find the will of God for this morning, and this message kept coming back to my heart. So last night I gave in to the Lord, and I was trying to get a, I had something else I wanted to preach, and, and I couldn't, it was just, just wasn't there. Amen. It just wouldn't come to me. And the Lord said, you got the message over there. If you'll just open up your Bible, you know where it's at. And so I did, and God gave it to us. So we're going to preach to you part of it this morning, or as long as the Lord will let us. Y'all don't seem to to mind too long, too bad if I, you know, if I preach to you. So we'll do that today. The this verse, Acts chapter four and verse number twelve. I'll read it. We'll have a word of prayer. Then we'll go. To the, then we'll go into the message. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Blessed, I pray the reading of the word of God. I pray that you'd help and bless. God, I pray the Spirit of God would work and the Spirit of God would move. If there's someone under the sound of our voice that don't know you, I pray by the power of the Spirit of God you'd send old time Holy Ghost conviction and bless, Lord, right now, Lord, that they might be saved. I pray, God, for Brother Angelo there in the Philippines as he goes back. God, let him win souls to the glory of God. I pray use him for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, the simple verse. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now that's a simple salvation verse, and it did me good last night studying it to understand that salvation is still something that's possible the day that we live in. Amen. It's still possible for men to be saved by the grace of God. And we don't see a lot of it here in this country. But you know what? Around the world there are people that are open to the gospel that are receiving the gospel message and being saved. And when we as a church uh, give to that ministry, then God blesses and we get a part of the blessing. Amen. For the souls that are being saved, even though they're not right here in our community. But, you know, God gives us some here once in a while. God sends someone here to get saved by the grace of God. Salvation is something that is very important uh, that everyone have. This being the uh, key verse here of this scripture, uh, salvation doesn't mean just being saved from hell. Although, thank God, I'm glad I don't have to go to hell. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved in the Lord Jesus Christ and I don't have to go to hell. But it doesn't mean just exactly that. It does mean that we're going to heaven also when we leave this world. Salvation doesn't mean just that I'm saved from hell, but it also means that I'm, I'm going to heaven when I die. It, this old world is not my home, friend. I'm just passing through. And I'll tell you one of these days, I'm going to a place far better than this. Amen. I'm going to a place where, where there's uh, things here, things there that I'll never experience here. But hallelujah, it's mine because of salvation. God's plan is for, for a lost man to be saved. See, friend, lost people like I was are beaten down with sin. It's as simple as that. We were under a load of sin, carrying a load of sin, beaten down by a load of sin. But when Jesus came into our heart, he paid our sin debt, lifted my sin's burden. And now by the grace of God, I'm saved from hell and I'm on my way to heaven when I leave this world. We know that salvation is a plan of God and it covers all of man's need from eternity past to eternity future. God's plan of salvation, friend, will always be there as long as God, amen, the Spirit of God is dealing with man. Salvation is possible in this, in this day that we live in. Now there's coming a day when the Spirit of God will not always strive with man. And after that day of the rapture when God's people are gone, amen, there will be no second change for those that have heard the gospel to be saved. So the Bible says today is an accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I want to give you three things this morning about salvation that it is absolutely necessary. Salvation is necessary, the Bible says. We must be saved in the end of that verse. We must be saved. Nobody's going to get to heaven except they're born again. Nobody's going to get to heaven because they've been good. Nobody's going to get to heaven because they've read the Bible. Nobody's going to get to heaven because they were baptized. But all must come through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad one day too, brother, as an eight-year-old boy, I come to the knowledge of a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got a grandson that, 
got on, they called me the other night telling me, telling me, Papa, all got saved. Hallelujah. And now he's on his way to heaven. I'm telling you from the youngest to the oldest, God's plan of salvation is a must for anyone to get to heaven. Why do we need salvation? Why did Jesus die for us? Why did he come into this world and leave all that he had for you and I? He'd come because he loved you and he came because he loved me and he came because we're not saved already. Amen. If we'd have been saved already, he would not have come to die on the cross. By nature, we are lost because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. We're lost without God. We're lost without hope. But one man's sin, sin entered into the world and death by sin and for that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So by nature, we're all sinners in need of a Savior. We're not saved already, and we were all, before we were saved, we're all perishing and on our way to hell. Man, I'm glad to tell you today. I'm glad to report today. I'm not going to hell, hallelujah, but I'm on my way to heaven. When I Hey, we all ought to shout over that very fact, I'm not going to hell. I don't have to die and go to hell because I'm saved in the grace of God. So being born again by the grace of God, we needed salvation because we are not saved already. We need salvation. It's absolutely necessary because we cannot save our sin. What could I do to blot out my sin? What could I do, brother, to, to, get, to get rid of my sin? Nothing could I do to get rid of my sin. Not of works, lest any man should boast. No matter how much penance I paid, no matter how much I... How, listen, I could be baptized in every creek, amen, in Madison County. I could be dunked in every pond in Madison County. I could go to every church with a baptistry and be baptized, but that wouldn't get me into the kingdom of God. You must be born again. That's why, that's why Jesus said you must be born again. Oh, it's not but nothing that I could do. It's not but nothing that I have done. But it's all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I could not save ourselves. And friend, if I could save myself, I couldn't keep myself. If I could, if it were possible, which it is not, for man to live sinlessly perfect before an almighty God, it never happened because he can't. There's no way that we can be saved except through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot save ourselves. And I'd ask you, think of one thing you can do in your life to save yourself from hell. And there's nobody got an answer. Oh, there's people that, got, that are full of false doctrine that'll tell you, they'll tell you, well, you just go to church every Sunday and you'll be all right when you die. Yeah, I know people that'll tell you, well, I live a good life. I, I live a good life. I go to church. I... I don't bother anybody, and I don't curse, and I don't swear, I don't run around on my wife, and I do it, I, you know, I live pretty good. So surely when I get to heaven, the Lord will let me in. Friend, I'm telling you, there ain't nothing you can do to get saved. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. It's all because of Jesus. Well, preacher, uh, I, I give to the church every Sunday. That won't get you in. I had a fellow tell me he was on the church of three different, on the roll of three different churches. Well, that's wrong to start with. And he thought that was going to get him into the kingdom of God. But it doesn't matter how many church rolls your name is on, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Preacher, what if I don't get born again? You're going to hell. Simple as I know how to tell you, friend, you're going to hell lost without God. And all oh, my friend, if people would just understand. If they, I, I want sometimes to tell people how simple it is to be born again and it seems like the devil always complicates it before them. The devil does his job. He, he tells people when, they're, when it comes to the point of salvation, you can't live it. No, I can't live it, but I can through the help of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He'll say, well, you'll, you'll mess up before the day's over and you won't be saved. Listen, I'll mess up before the day's over, but guess what? I have Jesus living in my heart. He gave me a gift that he'll never take away. And I'm free, amen, I'm free in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saved by the grace of God because of the gift of salvation. Number three, why salvation is absolutely necessary? Because God has provided it. God has provided a way of salvation. He has done this for us. He's done it for you and I. We must be saved because God has provided a way. Listen, if we could get there any other way than by the cross of Calvary, then Christ's death would be of no importance. But he, listen, his death is of all importance because he died 
and shed his blood to pay my sin debt and to pay your sin debt. And he was buried and he arose the third day. Why? Because of me. It is necessary. Salvation is absolutely necessary because God provided a miracle for you and I. Oh my, Can you? Th- where would you be without Jesus today? If you're saved in the grace of God, where would you be without Him? Where would you be without the Lord? I was lost and undone without God or His Son, but He reached out His hand for me. And if He had not, if I had not accepted Him, I would still be lost and on my way to hell or already there because of my sin. But now through Christ Jesus, hallelujah, I've been made, amen, I've been made clean through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the, I believe the Sunday school lesson this morning had to deal with the Lamb of God. I heard that verse being, quote, being quoted. Hey, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Christ Jesus provided our salvation. It was God the Father's plan. And Jesus Christ being God, also He made a way for me to be saved. He fulfilled the plan of God. I'll ask you simply this morning, I'm through. I told you I wouldn't be long. I'm through. But are you born again? Do you know without a doubt that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life? Listen, friend, you don't have long. This world is in one more mess. Amen. This world, our country is in one more mess. But I'm telling you what, my Jesus is still alive today. He's still strong today and he's still saving today. If people will just listen to the message of salvation and turn their heart to Jesus and say, Lord, I want to be saved. Will you save me? And the Holy Spirit of God deals with you and he moves inside when you ask him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray right now, God, Lord, this is what you give me. Lord, this is, this is time, to, time to close the message. And I pray right now, God, if there's someone under the sound of our voice that's never been born again in the grace of God, touch them day, today, I pray, with the sweet spirit of conviction that they might know they're lost and know they're in need of a Savior. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.